going on YouTube? It's your girl Monique Nicole and I am back with another video. Before we get started, honey, if you are new to my channel, please, please make sure you are subscribed. Go ahead and click that subscribe button down below right there. While you're at it, go ahead and click the thumbs up button and like this video. It is an easy and free way to help support my channel and my growth, okay? Get me in that algorithm, okay? So like this video, please, and thank you. So we are here tonight to talk about the latest episode of Snowfall. So we are season six, episode four of Snowfall. OMG, you guys, things are heating up. I thought this was an excellent episode. I loved it. From top to bottom, I really, really enjoyed it. I'm just so sad that this is the final season. <sighs> I can't believe this crap is almost over. Like, I can't believe it. What is going to happen? How is this going to end? You know, each episode, we're getting closer and closer to seeing how this is all, you know, basically unfolding. So, yeah, it's definitely a wild ride. Um, you guys, forgive me. I'm a little bit under the weather. That's why I, that's part of the reason why I'm recording this. Um, but anyway, doesn't make sense. But anyway, I don't feel good. So y'all just bear with me while I push through this video. If I forget anything, if I get anything mixed up, just correct me in the comment section. Be nice, be polite, and just let me know, you know, what I mean, um, what I may have missed or anything like that. Uh, and just bear with me while I push through this video as I am not feeling my best right now. But I had to crank this out for you guys. I didn't want to get too far behind. So we are here again reviewing episode four of Snowfall. So yeah, you guys, without further ado, let's get into it. So the episode starts off with Franklin, honey. Franklin is looking all stressed and disheveled. Um, basically while V and her mom are plotting and scheming. So they have a whole plot and a plan set in motion. Okay. So they are setting up a meeting with the same man that helped Teddy steal Franklin's money last season. Okay. Um, his assistant is actually breaking into his safe to retrieve some important documents, Cassandra is at the meeting with him as a distraction while V takes pictures of the documents. Now, the plan did not really work. Um, they were not able to get the money back exactly because they were not able to track where the money was taken from because Teddy was the one who took it. Now, Franklin is pretty pissed off. At this point, he's like, we wasted three weeks for y'all to tell me some information that I already knew. You know what I mean? Like WTF, why do we waste three weeks searching for this man, doing all this hard work for some information that I'm already privy to? You know what I mean? So he gets upset. He loses his cool. He blows up. Cassandra was ready to quit, honey. She was ready to walk off the scene with the gangsta lean. She was like, in order to succeed in this business, you have to keep your cool, okay? You have to remain calm. And Franklin was not calm, okay? <laughs> he was everything but calm. So later on, V and Franklin have a conversation. He basically lets her know that um, there is not a lot of money coming in right now, says that Kane is not pushing the product like he should be. Um, <clears throat> v says that she is not happy with how Franklin blew up on her mama, how he spazzed out, says that her mom was ready to walk away from this entire operation, okay, because she was not having it. So V lets him know that she and her mom are going to Panama to try to figure out where the money is, says it's a really, you know, risky operation, so she really needs her mom's help. So Franklin, get in line act correct so that my mama don't quit on us, okay? We already know she's shady. We know she's shady. We know she's sketchy. We don't trust her already. So the fact that she was ready to walk away already makes me a little nervous about this operation, okay? So moving on from that, um, Franklin meets with Kane 
Okay, so he basically wants to know what is going on with the cook. He says that he wants to see the operation and how things are being done. You know, not enough product is being pushed out fast enough. Now, Kane had me cracking up when he said, who do you think you are? The CEO of Rock? <laughs> the CEO of R-O-C-K? <laughs> um, you know, Kane eventually agrees to let, you know, um, Franklin go to the house and check out the cook and see, you know, what's going on. Um, so next up, we have Ruben meets with his partner, okay? So he finds out that the weapons shipment thing that happened last week got messed up because Teddy and Gustavo killed all them people. That whole operation was a no-go. So R Ruben says he knew it was a bad idea, and he actually now, he wants to switch some things around. He now wants to move in on Gustavo and not so much Franklin, he feels like Gustavo would be a better way to get to Teddy. There is actually some truth in that, I feel like. So it's not a bad plan, to be honest. So next we have Parissa and Teddy. Um, Teddy says that she needs to basically lay low and he wants her to stay with him. She says, what happens if they know everything about you? He says maybe he can shut the whole operation down, fix it, and he can still have a career. She says, or you can take the $73 million and leave the country. Now, he wants to know if Parissa would go with him, you know, would leave with him, you know what I mean, if he were to escape. What do y'all think about Parissa? Do, do we trust her? Do we think that she's genuinely, you know, in love with Teddy and wants to be his ride or die, you know, what, what do we think about this situation with Parissa? I wonder if she would actually leave with him, you know, I mean, $73 million, that's a lot of money. I mean, they can go live on an island somewhere together and be happily ever after. So she might, she might actually consider it, to be honest. But let me know what y'all think in the comments below. So next, um, Sissy comes home okay she's coming home minding her own business like she always do and she hears some noise so she pulls out her gun like who the hell is in my damn house turns out it was wanda honey she almost she almost killed wanda <laughs> so they end up sitting and talking you know about africa and her trip and different things like that and wanda says you know it's really hard being back and being in the projects and just being exposed to the drugs and everything. It's constant temptation for her. It's a constant struggle for her to be exposed and just to be in that type of environment, which I can only imagine would be triggering. Um, and Sissy actually suggests that she um, works at Alton's shelter to help her, you know, stay busy and whatnot. So I think that is actually a good idea. I actually thought that um, Sissy was going to offer Wanda a place to stay. Like I thought she was going to offer her to stay at her house to get away from the projects, but she didn't. She gave her some advice, but I thought she was going to be like, well, you can stay here, you know, in the time being, but I guess Sissy wants her place to herself. Okay. Okay. So next we have Franklin. So Franklin is with Ricky and they go to check out the cook to see why the product is not getting put out fast enough. So Franklin is making suggestions, says that they need to be working 12 hour shifts and, you know, he's giving them some suggestions or whatever. And Todd, the cook is just talking crap, talking cash money ish, um, making fun of Franklin says that he doesn't care who Franklin is. You're not going to come up in here and tell me how to cook. So Franklin snaps and burns this man's face. I mean, we heard the face sizzling, baby, just sizzling. It was, it was crazy. Y'all better not mess with Franklin. Just because he's in a suit does not mean he is to be messed with or played with. Do not play with Franklin Saint, Okay. He is not to be messed with, people. So next, um, <clears throat> so Leon. Leon tries to talk to Big D about the damn lights outside, okay? Now, D 
wants um, to protect his workers and he feels like having the lights out helps with cover. Leon, on the other hand, wants them to get fixed. And we see later on he did just that and got them fixed. Okay. So next we have Todd, the cook, who got his damn face burnt off. <laughs> he goes, uh-oh, let me mute my thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. So Todd goes to Kane and lets him know that he does not like how things were handled. He is pissed off at Franklin for what he did. And talking is just not going to be enough. He wants Kane to do more. Now, Kane says, look, brother, Franklin makes me a lot of money. Now, if you want to continue to run your mouth and you want to continue to try to check me, you can be placed in the corner if that's what you want to do. But as for me, we are still going to be working with Franklin, whether you like it or not. So get with it, brother. That's basically what Kane was saying. Now, later on. This same brother right here goes to Jerome and Louis, okay? Goes to Jerome and Louis and makes a deal with them, okay? Let's them know that he is no longer effing with Cain. And by the way, he does not like your nephew, Franklin, okay? <laughs> Let's them know where Cain is staying at, okay? So he betrays his friend Cain and lets uh, Louis and Jerome know where he's staying up at. So, of course, they come up with a plan to set him up. And we see how, you know, we saw how that went. So, we have Leon and Wanda at the projects outside. Um, Leon basically says to her, you know, at first he thought that he could make a change, but now it feels pointless. You know, the people are not trying to listen to him or change or do anything positive or different, you know. So while they're talking, having a little heart to heart, um, Dion is in the background talking cash money-ish about Wanda being a hoe and being a crackhead and what she used to do in the past and all that stuff being very disrespectful. Um, I will say, shockingly, Leon was able to keep his cool. I was surprised he stayed calm. I was very surprised that he stayed so calm. But Dion was being disrespectful. Like, honestly, at this point, I do not like Dion. He is annoying to me. He's an asshole. He's a jerk. He's obnoxious. He is lame. I'm ready to see him go night night. I care nothing about Dion. Okay. So next, we have Teddy and Gustavo. Um, Teddy tells Gustavo to basically lay low and watch out for anyone following him because of, you know, all the stuff that, that, that they just did in Costa Rica the week before. So Teddy compliments Gustavo on how he used the Beretta. And he says, well, he learned it from the CIA. So right when he's leaving, Teddy gives Gustavo this weird look, Okay. He gave him one of them weird looks, and I just knew. I just knew from that moment on he was going to be onto Gustavo. He was going to follow him. He was going to do something. I just knew it because he gave him one of them long little stares and little glares that he gave. You know, he gives sometimes uh, Teddy ass. I knew it. So I knew. I knew that Teddy was going to be on to Gustavo. So let's see. So Gustavo goes to this bar, right? Because he got into an argument with his girlfriend. So he goes to this bar. All of a sudden, guess who pops up on him? Ruben. So Ruben says he knows about Gustavo and Teddy he also mentioned something about the DEA. Um, he says he wants Teddy and needs some intel. Um, says that Teddy can't save him and lets him know that Teddy is no longer with the CIA and he just cannot protect him. So, um, yeah, so basically he's like, you need to be working with me from here on out. Um, so Ruben leaves and guess who is outside? Guess who is 
outside in the car. Teddy, honey. Teddy, Teddy, Teddy. So he spots Ruben. Now, I'm not sure if Teddy, I guess Teddy saw Gustavo go inside the bar, but he doesn't really know if Teddy, I mean, he doesn't really know if Gustavo and Ruben were talking, but nonetheless, he's onto it. He sees Ruben. I'm sure he recognizes him from the drawing. And now it's about to be on and popping. On and popping. Because Teddy is on the scene with the gangsta lean. And you, you guys know he's not going to let this go. He's going to keep following Ruben. And it's going to be a whole thing now. So we're going to see what's going to happen with that. Now, Gustavo meets with the DEA. I think his name is Tony. And he says that, um, Tony says that they are going to raid Teddy's warehouse very soon. And this is going to be like a big deal. Now, I don't think it's going to go as planned. Something about this is going to go really left somewhere along the line. Somehow, I think Teddy's going to catch on to something. He's going to abandon the warehouse. It's not going to go as planned. That's just, it's just not going to go as planned, basically. Not at all. So next up, we have Franklin and Kane, okay? This is probably the best scene of the night. So Franklin and Kane are talking and, you know, they're having an argument about what Franklin did to Todd. And Kane says, don't mess with his people anymore. You know what I mean? He wants to be the one to reprimand his people. Um, Franklin says that he did what needed to be done. While they're arguing, all of a sudden, baby, all of a sudden bullets start flying. Okay. Louis and Jerome's plan is in full effect. Bullets are flying everywhere. Um, and in the midst of all that, Todd walks in and gets shot by Kane. And then it cracked me up because Franklin was like, Todd, nigga? Todd? <laughs> and then shoots him in the head. That shit was so funny to me. <laughs> Franklin said, Todd, nigga? Todd? Um... So, yeah, so it's a whole shootout. They're basically able to kill the people that were coming after them, and they are able to escape, thankfully. No one got, not no one got hurt, but Franklin nor Kane got hurt, which is really, really, really good. And then now we are at the final scene where, um, so basically Wanda and Leon are helping Einstein fill out some college applications. And then all of a sudden we hear gunshots um, Dion is shooting out the street lights that Leon just paid <laughs> to have fixed. So Leon is like, you know what? I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of your shit. We about to fucking fight. We are about to fight. Let's throw these hands and get it popping. So at first, Dion had the upper hand, okay? He was whooping that ass at first. Seemed like he was going to win the fight. But then Leon came back with the one, two, hit a quitter. He came back and he hit him in the head with the bottle and won the fight. Now, my question to you guys is, will Dion seek revenge? You know what I mean? Will he seek revenge on what took place? I don't see him just walking away. I don't see him just taking this laying down. I see this being an ongoing beef. Um, between Leon and Big D. What do y'all think? Please let me know in the comments um, below what y'all think, what's going to happen with Dion. Um, and then also let me know what y'all think about the episode overall. Did you guys like it? What did y'all like? What y'all dislike? All that good stuff. And I am done. We are out of here. I did this in 20 minutes. I'm so proud of myself. Woo woo. Woo woo. Uh, 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 uh. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please, please like this video. Please hit the thumbs up button to like this video. Get me in that algorithm, y'all. Help me grow my channel. Please and thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.